Hello, welcome back to the AP Government Skills Webinar presented by the Bill of Rights Institute. We're happy to have you here today as we prepare for the upcoming AP Government and Politics Test. These webinars are designed to help you with the skills needed um, for the test. So today's webinar, today's webinar is going to be specifically on the content analysis FRQ. I am Liz Evans. I'm the Regional Programs Manager here at BRI. I also taught AP Gov for six years, so I'm going to be moderating the chat and answering as many questions as I can. Joining me today is teacher extraordinaire John Burkowski Jr. from the Academy for Advanced Academics in Miami, Florida. Take it away, JB. All right. Thank you, Liz. Good evening, AP government students, friends, colleagues, parents, people sitting behind you at Starbucks. Welcome again to uh, episode two of uh, AP government with the BRI, thank you, the Rights Institute. Today is the concept application FRQ. So let's get this going, let's get this party started. Yes, the concept application, this is gonna be number one FRQ that you'll see on section two of your AP government exam. But before we dive into this, Let's all hear a story. Think about the questions that you see in the chat related to this story. So once upon a time, Congress passed the tariff of 1883. It increased taxes on imported vegetables, listing the tomato as a vegetable. Now we know, we know, we know tomatoes, technically fruit, but, 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 but. <laughs> government. The John Nixon company, a uh, domestic fruit company has been successfully shipping and importing produce to New York City from Bermuda and Florida. So when they collected the tax uh, in enforcing the tariff on the company's imported tomatoes, the company, the John Nixon company, they sued in federal court to list the tomato as its proper botanical classification of a fruit. So I wanna ask you very simply, what did the company do in an attempt to try to uh, change this, this tariff law. You also want to consider and explain how that action could affect public policy making by Congress. And then consider what else the company could have done in lieu of the action. All right. Well, I guess in an audience of one, I get it. It's it probably is late. I help out. Maybe the action that was taken here is, of course, the company is filing a lawsuit in federal court to change this law. Now, how could this affect congressional public policy making? Well, if the courts, the federal courts, particularly the Supreme Court, if it rules in favor of the Nixon, uh, Nixon company, then Congress would have to change, would have to then uh, deliberate on revising the tariff law. Now, what could the company have done in lieu of filing a lawsuit? They could have lobbied Congress members to change the law. This could be through campaign contributions or through using their connections with uh, local voters, uh, even perhaps persuade their uh, employees to perhaps vote for different types of representatives in and around New York. And that could put some pressure on Congress to uh, effectively uh, pass the revise the legislation. So, with this story, you notice that this is really the scenario that you're gonna be getting on the, on the concept application FRQ. 
an actual scenario. Yes, this is a real story. And by the way, spoiler alert, the Supreme Court, it got this case and it decided to say the tomato is a vegetable. It even recognized that it was technically a fruit. But, 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 but society was eating tomatoes as if they were a vegetable. You found, them, you found them more in salads than you did as a typical dessert. So, ah, America. So let's get into the concept application. Before we get that, let's, under, let's kind of recap what the exam is. Remember, you're doing this, this is gonna be the question one, but you're gonna be doing this after you have just completed the multiple choice. So you re recall that you have four free response questions, got a total of 100 minutes. The concept application is 12 and a half percent of the exam. It's three points, got a part A, part B, and part C. Each one, one point, and it's binary. You get the point or you don't get the point. There is a suggested or recommended time of 20 minutes for the concept application. That's up to you though, that's a recommendation. So usually they'll tell you that, all right, you might wanna move on. As for the 2021 digital exam, let's be mindful for those of you taking this option that there is no skip and return. As you can see there in the highlighted, so if students skip ahead, they won't be able to go back. So if you decide, I don't wanna do the concept application, you get you, you, you start trying to do it and then you're like, oh, let, me go, let me go somewhere else. I'm gonna come back to this. You can't, you either do it or you don't. So you can go through the parts. You can maneuver through the different parts of the FRQ. So part A, if you wanna say, oh, let's do part C before I do part A, you can do that. I don't recommend that for this concept application FRQ, but just so you know, that option is available. And you can kind of see the, how the digital exam will probably look. I know this says AP Environment Sounds, but you'll have a timer, which you can hide. It, you know, that's kind of stretch you out. Uh, but you can see down here how it's very, there's a division line between the different questions in the parts. So make sure that, you know, you consider, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Whatever question you decide to start with, you got to finish it. Okay. So recap that, JB, where do I get the content? Where do I get the skills? Where can I find all this wonderful information? Go to the Bibles. One would be the College Board AP United States Government CED, Course and Exam Description. That's where you'll find all the big ideas and essential knowledge for content, which you will definitely need for your FRQs. Doesn't matter which one it is. And of course, don't forget to review the United States Constitution, the true Bible of the course, not just the exam, but the course, government itself, uh, specifically American government. And to re uh, give you a recap of specific factual information, where could you find this? You access this, you click on this link. Some angel of a GoPro teacher had went through the CED and jotted down by unit each of the specific factual information that was explicitly listed, mentioned in the CED. So that way you can efficiently, deter, uh, you know, your review, efficiently uh, plan your review by using, focusing on those particular uh, specific factual information. And don't forget, you might wanna be able to use those uh, in your FRQs. All right, so let's dive into this. This is one big, huge disciplinary practice, the concept application. You would be doing this in the multiple choice as well, but you're gonna have to prove your worth on the FRQ. And it's basically story time. You are going to get an actual, Act, you know, this, this, this the scenario given to you is not made up. It is a political scenario that really, really happened. You may not be familiar with it. You, you may even learn something like, wow, that's amazing. I didn't think that really happened. But it is going to, uh, you know, be based on a real scenario, real political scenario, but also mention real concepts that you would find and you have been learning in AP government. So this is, when you go through this, this is the skills and the tasks that are involved in the concept application that these will be directly assessing. So you have describe, those big words, your characteristics. We're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this. Explain, oh yes, explain. All right. My kids love that one. We have compare. You will probably be doing this more than likely more implicitly than explicitly. I've never seen any explicit tasks 
you know, specifically asking to compare, but I have seen comparable situations being assessed on the concept application question. So be mindful of, of how you're gonna be assessed on this specific skill and task. This is where it gets more specific to the concept application. Describe and explain that we just saw are the basic tasks. This is where you're gonna, you know, we'll be doing this, but then they're asking like, you're gonna to have to do this in response to these different scenarios. And this is the idea of describing and explaining these principles, institutions, processes, policies, and behaviors in that particular scenario. And even in a different scenario uh, on some of these concept applications, in that you, that's, that's where it kind of narrows your processing. So part of, part of the skills is also processing, your reasoning processes, in that you have to start telling your mind all this knowledge, all this understanding you have at government, it has to narrow down. You have to narrow it and process it within the confines, within the boundaries, the limits of the scenario. To recap about this concept application, you're given an authentic scenario. So this is a real legit, legit uh, action that's occurred. You will be asked to describe and explain the effects uh, of the political institution behavior process. But probably the more complex will be to transfer understanding of a course concept and apply them in a new situation or scenario. That's where it's gonna get more complex. So let's, uh, let's dive into that. These are the task verbs, the specific task verbs that you will be explicitly uh, and implicitly uh, developing, uh, applying in your FRQs, as a matter of fact, in your choice. So, I like to start with the, the basics. Let's go with the basics. Identify and define. If only, if only, if only we could go back to the days where we could just simply define. Yes, oh, define is easy. You know, define the filibuster, it's great. Oh yeah, the filibuster is. If we could just identify, identify what's happening there, identify the action. And that's pretty simple skill. You know, just like we saw what happened in the, in, in, with the tariff of 1883. Congress passed the tariff of 1883, uh, uh, increasing uh, taxes on imported produce, imported vegetables, particularly. Yeah, I just identified. That's it. You know, it, you know, just you know, grasping at the at the scenario. Let's get a little bit more complex. Right? Now we gotta describe, describe and explain are really going to be your explicit tasks on the concept application FRQ. You will be seeing those words in Part A, Part B, Part C. Now, as a part of that, and we're gonna get into it just to kind of give you a little brief tease, you will be also identifying. You will have to do that as part of the task. It may not be explicitly asked to do, but you will be doing it as part of the process, especially to the process to maximize those point potentials. The other ones are gonna be applied to other FRQs. For example, develop an argument really simply means develop a thesis. That's going to be key in your uh, argument of essay. That'll be discussed later. Draw a conclusion, you will see that specifically with the quantitative analysis FRQ. And that will be discussed with that episode focused on the QA. But describe and explain for sure. And you can see compare. And I always tell my students, you gotta be fair when you compare. Be fair when you compare. And you may not be explicitly asked to do a comparison question, but you may, be, uh, you may have to compare certain situations but when you do compare, and if you ever, ever are asked to compare, make sure that you give a balanced approach. If you're comparing the Senate and the House, make sure that you address both chambers, both parties, both elements. Make sure you always do that. Give a fair shot at both. Don't leave one hanging. Never leave one hanging. Don't go all on, all on about the House of Representatives. Like, oh, the House, the House this, the House that, the House is that. Oh, yeah. You may give this great, fantastic, elaborate, beautiful, right? One where the AP readers will just put on the wall, be like, oh my God, this. But if you don't compare it to the Senate, if you don't mention the Senate, or you just give this very brief little bit about it, then they're going to take it back on the wall, be like, no, 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 JK. And so, yeah, you have to be able to give a balanced approach to both. Be fair when you compare. Now, as you can see there about explain, and this goes back to what my students were saying. <laughs> explain how, see it in quotations there, 
how? And then over here, why? So when I ask my students a question and say like, all right, define this. And my student, oh, I got this, I got this. Yes, yes, JB, call me, JB, JB. Right? Yeah. Oh, uh, the filibuster is blah, blah, blah. And they are very proud of themselves. They're looking at it and say, see, I'm smart, I can do this. Give me the A. All right, I got this slide. But then I'm like, all right, but why? And oh, the two dreaded words, the two dreaded words in AP government class, uh, <laughs> <laughs> any AV class, actually any any class. How or why? How or why? And the kids, that's where they shut down. Like, no, no, no. And, and they've learned over time. You know what my students do? And you probably do this too. And uh, you can admit it. You probably don't raise your hand, even when the teacher says, Let's ask the basic question, right? Oh, define or oh, describe and, or identify. You're probably like, no, 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 because I am not falling for that bait and switch. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 I know what's next. I know what's coming next. I'm going to get the dreaded how or why. That's not going to be me. I am not going to. But my friends, the how and the why, explain. You're going to be seeing that plenty. You're going to be doing that plenty. You're going to have to apply that plenty on the multiple choice, on all the FRQs, that is the key. You want the key to success, all right? If we're playing any video game, we're playing Zelda, and you got to collect the keys, boom, explain. That's it. Let's, 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 you know, collecting the infinity stones, right? Oh, I got define. Oh, I got describe. Oh, I got, I got develop an argument. Oh, I got identify. But right there, man, that last one, that last one, explain. Once you get that last stone and you snap, you'll be like, I got a five on my exam. But you got to do that. That's going to be the key. You can't do anything else without that explain. Can't do anything else. You won't have the power, all right? You, the success will be limited if you don't master the explain, the how, the why. So as you go through this, you'll see that these are the basic definitions because I'm basically siphoning out what needs to be done for the concept application. Identify, it's really part of the process. You may get practice questions that ask you to identify and they just explain, but you're going to be identifying, trust me or not. Describe, oh, well, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. And compare in a in more an implicit way. And here's the big one, explain again. So these are the task orders that you definitely will have to address on the FRQ for concept application. So to kind of give you another example and try to really figure out, you know, what's, what is really the difference between describe and explain? In a very simple terms, let's, you know, we want to start basically. Let's, 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 let's climb the pyramid here. Describe, one example. Describing is asking you to not simply define what the House of Representatives is. We know what it is. It's one of the, you know, one of the legislative chambers in the United States Congress, along with the Senate. Okay, cool, that's, that's what that is. But describe it, describe the relevant characteristics of the House. Well, in a, sim in, in a simple way, the House of Representatives is directly elected and based on proportional representations. Those are the relevant characteristics and when I also say relevant, I also mean relevant to the context of the question, scenario in this particular case, uh, but you know, really limited to what we're trying to answer. But well, you know, those are the relevant characteristics. That's what the house is. Those, those are basic character, basic elements of the, of the house. But then explain. So over here, you see that explain, and I'm sure your teachers probably use this word as kind of, you know, how do I, how do, how do I explain? And there's that keyword of because. Now you don't necessarily have to use the word because. You could use it in a different form or fashion, but it's just that element of because that you want to incorporate in your responses. Define in, to, to go back to uh, define and describe. And yeah, define and describe, like I said, let's go, let's use the filibuster. So what is the filibuster? It is a Senate rule allowing to uh, for for endless debate, right? That's what it is. That's the definition of it, right? Put simply. But let's describe it and say that well, the filibuster would be used by a senator to talk a bill to death, and and in order to stall debate on the passage, you know, on the potential passage of a bill. Okay, and that's really where you see the characteristics of the filibuster being how it's being used uh you're starting to segue into explain 
And I like to, uh, you know, explain it kind of gets more deeper into the how and the why. And that's when you can incorporate other elements, like it probably is a particular party, maybe the minority party getting that. That's where you start really telling things like because. So why would they do this? So hopefully that 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 gives you that distinction between definition and describe. But even when you describe, you, you can incorporate the definition. That's totally fine. Don't limit yourself on this, by the way. And that's going to be a key uh, strategy when you do these FRQs. All right. So for explain, you see, like, all right, what explain the house? When you explain, notice something when I do this. The House of Representatives is directly elected and based on proportional representation. Like JB, you put what you described. Yes, because you want to do that. You want to do that. And it's like, well, what about that? How, why, why would they, why is it directly elected? Why is it based on proportional representation? Look at the constitution. The constitution is these powers, right? These lists, like this is what can be done. This is what cannot be done. This is who has this, this is who has that. It all breaks it down, structure. And that's a lot of define and describe, okay? Describe the powers of the house, describe the powers of the Senate, describe the powers of the Senate. What is explain? Let's go back in time, all right? Let's get in our DeLorean, all right? And go back in time and be able to sit with the framers as they're debating the Constitution, as they're trying to set all this up. And so someone's going to say, like, hey, we should have the house like this. And there's going to be that one person, right? That one framer going to be like, but why? Why do you want to set it up like that? And that's where the framer is going to go on and on and on, because I don't know if you ever heard or read some of these debates from Madison, and they go on and on and on. And, you know, Alexander the Man Hamilton was notorious for blah, 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 blah. blah. And it's kind of like, <laughs> please don't write like that on your FRQs, by the way. All right. Don't do the Hamilton thing. All right. Don't write on and on, but just, you know, keep it succinct, keep, keep it efficient. But that's where you want to, that's what explain is. Explain is, but this is why. And this is how we're going to do it. This is how it's going to work. So that is, uh, and that's the key element there. That is a key element of explain, especially in the end. But remember that describing can be a part of that process. It is a part of that process. Okay. When you compare, uh, in the process of this, just in case, you know, as I said, you may not be explicitly asked to compare. I'm, I want to go over this with you just in case, just in case, just, just, just in case in regards to kind of developing those com the comparison skills. So let's put this in the form, let's put the for let's use describe and explain, but in the sense of comparing. So we're comparing the House and the Senate. All right, so how, you know, remember, you have to be fair to compare. So when you describe, you say, oh, the House of Representatives is directly elected and based on proportional representation. Cool, we already got that. Don't leave, a don't leave the Senate hanging. Don't leave the Senate sen the hanging. You gotta, you gotta throw in the Senate. The Senate was originally chosen by state legislatures and based on equal representation from Senator Tommy Chase. Ah, big difference. Big difference. Comparably, what do they both do? Similar. What is their similar task, responsibility? They are part of the legislative process. Uh, there are elections involved. There are, there's chosen. But as we dive deeper, we see that there are clear distinctions, right? And we're getting, you know, we've, we've gone from the similarity. Now we're heading into the difference. And you see, as it was noted there. But now let's get into the narrative. Let's get into the explain. How could we compare but having to explain this, the how and the why? Absolutely. The describing can be included in the process of explaining. As a matter of fact, you should describe as a part of the process of explaining. And I'm going to show you. The magic is going to happen. Watch, watch, watch. So here, this is very simple. Right now, what we're doing is looking at a simple way of kind of understanding what we have to do with explain, just visualizing it, and then we are going to become the master. The House of Representatives is directly elected and based on proportional representation because, sorry, because it is designed to represent and incorporate the various interests and views of the people in development of public policy. Right, to incorporate those various interests. That, that's why, that's why they wanted to do it, the people, okay? The Senate, don't leave the Senate hanging. Senate was originally chosen by state legislatures and based on equal representation because it is designed to represent and incorporate the interests of the several states in development of public policy. So we're explaining why they set it up this way. 
right? Yes. So yeah, for explain, uh, you're getting into the, the why and the how. You might need to just, it might be just be just why, it may just be how. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get more into that. All right. Now let's, let's get into the heart of the concept application. The questions themselves, the format of it, the structure. The questions will, part A, part B, and part C, will actually build on each other, All right? Part A is really going to build on the scenario in, you know, that you get. You know, when you initially read it, that part A will ask you to describe an action all right, perhaps an action or an actor or both in the scenario. So part A builds on the scenario. So that scenario is extremely important. You will have to go back to that. I mean, you will have to, as you're reading it, you need to process it. You need to be able to highlight and, and identify, uh, you know, essential components and elements of it. We're going to do that. Don't worry. Then part B, part B is then going to build upon part A's response. You're going to have to explain so get into the how or why on what you did for part A, what you described in part A. And then part C, start kind of bringing everything together. So part C will generally build on the interaction between part A and part B. And that's where you wanna be mindful of compare because that comparison might come in and kind of ask for say a, a different scenario or a different situation or a different action. And so you wanna, you, you wanna be mindful of that. Go with the flow of the reasoning. What do I mean by that? Do part A, then part B, then part C. Do them in order. You, I totally, totally recommend do them in order. Do part A, then segregate to part B, then segregate to part C. I do not recommend skipping, going, going back and forth between them. That's not going to do it for you because of how they're built. They're built upon each other. All right, that scenario is the foundation. That's the foundation. And part A is where, all right, we start putting up the walls. All right, part B is kind of like, here's the roof. All right, cool. And then part C is kind of like, all right, let's, uh, let's, start, let's start designing it from the inside out. That is how you want to approach the concept application. Do them in order. A, B, and C, just like the alphabet, just follow it. So how can we structure a legit response when we describe, when we explain. So uh, I also teach AP US history and there are short answer questions, which these FRQs in government, uh, particularly the FR, you know, concept application, quantitative analysis and SCOTUS comparison, they're very similar to the short answer questions in the AP histories. Just answer them, task. One, you know, here's part A, here's part B, part C, answer them, no thesis, no, no, it's not an essay. We don't need a conclusion. We don't need narrative. We don't need storytelling. We don't, you know, no, 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 no. Jump right in, answer it, be efficient. So what I did was is that I took a common uh, English language, you know, ELA uh, writing strategy and applied it to the AP histories and the government. So you probably have a familiar, if you've been taking, uh, you know, in your language courses, especially maybe AP English language, maybe even AP Lit, that your teacher probably says something along the lines, not necessarily exactly like this, but along the lines that when you are developing your essay, especially your body paragraphs, that you make a claim, you provide evidence and the commentary, the reasoning, you know, how your claim, how, you know, how the evidence uh, supports that claim, how it substantiates and, and, and and explains why this the, the claim is correct. You know, so what I did was I just applied that to this, to AC, right? To AC FRQ. Uh, and you do this for these particular tasks. And of course, you can apply this to even the argumentative essay. So A stands to answer, which means to identify the claim, which is very similar to making, you know, making the argument to be proven. Uh, C stands for cite. This is where you will define and describe relevant characteristics of the claim. What about the claim? What about that? And then we get into E. This is the most important element, the most important component of ACE. This really will apply to when you have to explain. And I'm gonna, I'll, I'll break that down for you. I'll, I'll, I'll make you understand. So 
but here's where expand. Now, some your student, your teachers probably have been using this. They probably you know changed the wording to explain. It's cool. It's fine. But the, the the basic structure applies. When you expand or explain, you're explaining how the claim responds to the question and connecting to those political concepts that you're going to incorporate as part of substantiating this answer. But your government teacher probably has been using close the loop, right? Think about this circle, right? You're answering, you're citing, and then boom, that explain gets back to how what I what I introduced the the the, the claim. The identified claim and the relevant characteristics of it. How does that justify my answer? Justify my claim? In response to the prompt, right? When for those of you taking the paper exam, you can go in whatever order. You can do the concept application first. You can do it last. You can do argument and essay first. You can do SCOTUS next. It's up to you you will, it's, it's totally fine. It's your, that's the paper exam. That's, that's one of the big differences is that when you get to the, on the digital exam, you have to do them in order. You could skip around on the paper exam. You go, you could do part A in the concept application and be like, oh, I'm bored and go to the school's <laughs> FRQ and start doing that. And then just come back to the concept application. Totally up to you. Be mindful of that, be mindful of the timing. My recommendation, real quick, real quick recommendation on that is go with what you know. I mean, you can, uh, those of you on the paper exam, you can, you can look at the questions based on your confidence, right? Your capabilities on what, what is being asked, what is being assessed, do whatever order you prefer. It's up to you. That's my recommendation. I leave it up to what's, what's comfortable for you. I really don't have this universal strategy of which, which FRQs should we do first on the paper exam. It's up to you. All right, go with what you feel best, you know, maximize your point potential. All right, so that's ACE. This is ACE right here. You're identifying the claim, answer. You're describing a relevant characters claim, cite, and then explain how the claim responds to the questions. Close that loop by, with the connections by, by expanding. So when you describe, you can apply ACE here, just not the whole thing. When you describe, you will make the claim, you'll identify a claim, and you will cite, meaning you will define, describe the, 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 the claim, what you've answered, what you've identified as your claim, get into those relevant characteristics. It's fine. This could be done in two sentences. It could be done in two to three sentences. That's up to you. It's fine. With explain, ace the whole thing, right? A-C-E. When you have to explain, do this whole, uh, these tasks as part of that. As part of the as, as part of the whole. Okay, let's actually do this. Let's get into an actual actual FRQ so we can kind of see the process. So in this particular FRQ, uh, it's asking you to do all the skills and tasks here. This you know, this is just you know, we already know what to do. This is part of the, the, from the CED. You will have to describe. You have to explain and, and all that. Okay, this right here is particular to the content. The actual big idea and essential knowledge that is being assessed in this particular concept application FRQ. You're going to explain the benefits and potential problems of interest group influence on elections and policy. And you're going to explain how various political actors influence public policy outcomes. That's what's being explicitly assessed here. So when you do, you have the you have the scenario. It's a legit actual scenario, as I, as I mentioned. And then here are the parts. As you can see, check this out. Describe, explain. And then da, 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 explain. Uh -huh. Describe, explain, explain. That's what you can expect. Part A, describe. B and C, explain, explain. But remember that you will be for, for even B and C, the word describe is not there, but you will be described because that is part of the process. That will be a, that, that can is an essential part of the process. So you can tell the reader, I get this. I, I know government. I'm going to get this. We can read the scenario, all right, given our situation. Here's what I, here's the actual scenario. Uh, the National Association of Home Builders, a national interest group that represents over 140,000 members in the home construction industry, has endorsed David Baladao, Republican for a re-election in California's 21st Congressional District in the 2018 midterm election. Rep Representative Baladao has made housing and home ownership a top national priority and understands that expanding housing opportunity for all Americans is essential to the economic and social well-being of our nation. Said Randy Knoll, 
chairman of the National Association of Home Builders. We are proud to endorse Representative Valadao for a re-election in November because he helped to shepherd the landmark tax reform bill through Congress that will put more money into the pockets of hardworking families, reduce the tax burden for small businesses, and promote job and economic growth. No. Recent polls point lead over Democratic challenger TJ Cox. Source, Valadao picks up several endorsements and for Senate and for California. All right, so there it is. What should you do when you get this scenario? Obviously, you got to read it. But when you read it, you might want to do this. Now, you won't be able to have a highlighter on the paper exam. Everybody got that? You cannot have a highlighter. Please, let me just, let me just clarify that. No highlighter. You need to bring a number two pencil that works and a blue or I'm sorry, dark blue or black pen. Everybody got that? Nothing else. No highlighters, no markers, no colored pencils, right? No paint brushes, nothing of the sort. Not the pen with the different little color clicks. No, 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 no. Dark blue or black pen, number two pencil. Why did I do it with a highlighter? So you can see it, all right? You know, that way, you know, it just looks better. But when you do this, see where the yellow highlight is? When you take your pen or pencil, that's what you do. Underline. So underline the key terms. Underline terms that I know government now. I'm a master at it. So I, I know what this is saying. National interest group. Woo! Key word. Represents. 140,000 members, that's a lot. Endorsed, I like that word, endorsed. Action, is it an action, right? Uh, in this particular case, you might wanna highlight, oh, Republican, see, 2018 midterm election, maybe that's uh, a key situation. Uh, housing and home ownership, top national priority. Uh, that's what he's doing here. Randy Knoll, chairman of the National Associated Home Builders, so this is a, a top representative of this interest group. Uh, we are proud to endorse represent so for re-election. So we're combining what's happening here. This topic sentence, topic paragraph, right? Help to shepherd landmark tax reform bill. Let's see what he's doing. More money into the pockets of hardworking families. Okay, reduce tax. Polls show about that holding eleven point lead over Democratic challenger. Maybe that's going to be relevant. Who knows? It's just a key element of this, perhaps. And then the source. Always consider the source. The source is extremely important. I love the source. I always love the source because sometimes. You probably never saw this situation. You probably don't even know who Representative Valadao is. Okay, maybe you never heard of California. Here's the thing. The source could, you actually might have a scenario where you're like, I know who this is about, or I know that person, or I know that group. Hey, when you're more familiar with it, awesome. If you're not familiar with it, it's not the end of the world. Don't freak out. Now you're looking at this and be like, what you should know which, when you read this is, I know government and I, kind of understand some of these elements of the scenario. Good, good, good. If we do, awesome. All right, so we got it. Interest groups. That's what we you know, interest groups, election, representative from the house, midterm election to be clear, maybe California, you see polls leading. All right, part A. Part A asks to describe an action being taken by the National Association of Home Builders in this scenario, in this scenario. We know the National Association of Home Builders is an interest group, which the scenario actually pointed out. It, 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 it described it as such. Now, your brain is saying like, I know interest groups. I know all about interest groups. Oh my God, my God, we went over that. We just refreshed. All right. and so all this information is coming right to the front, right? This is what we know about interest groups. What you should be doing is, Hold on, hold on, hold on, filter, filter, filter. What, what, is, what, what is the interest group doing in the scenario? That's where your brain, that's the processing. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, got all of these. Got to do it in the boundaries, the limits of the scenario. Now, all we have to do is describe an action. So that means you identify the action. And that would be the action being taken by the National Association of Home Builders, the interest group. Uh, and then, oh, you know, that's again include the relevant characteristics of it. And really, you're just taking from the scenario. That's what's easy about it. This is what's a, this part A is going to be pretty easy because it's you're basically going to it's asking you like, did you read it? Did you read the scenario? That's going to help you. Did you read, did you actually read this national association? So what I did was I kind of color coded the ace part, right? So the yellow's in the A, the answer, and the blue is the C, the site, the the, the 
define or describe. The National Association of Home Builders released a public endorsement of Representative Vidal. That's what they did. That's that's the that's what we, that was the action. You have identified the action, but remember, you want to describe it. The statement will educate voters on the candidate in the upcoming election. That's why they're releasing this, right? That, that's that's the, they're describing the sign. Then you want to a little bit more, right? Get some relevant characteristics in there, and, and, and kind of you know detail what it is about this public endorsement. What it's intended to do, right? Now, part B. This is it. This is it. Two sentences could have done this. Could you, if you wanted to throw in a little bit more, hey, two to three sentences is fine. You want to be efficient. Timing is of the essence. Remember, suggested time of twenty minutes. You don't spend too much time, especially on a task that relevantly, uh, re I'm sorry, relatively simple. Now let's go to part B. X. Explain. Oh no, 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 how the why? Why, why the why? All right. How the action described in part A, see how they did it described in part A affects policy making in Congress. Have you been noting what, what's been happening here? The underlining, you know, even underlining the scenario, but also underlining so you're familiar with what this question is asking. That helps you? Awesome. Do it. Explain the action affect policy making in Congress. Again, your brain is like, whoa, whoa. but remember, limit to, whoa, 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 it's just what, but what was the action? You identified that. Endorsements from interest groups will affect the legislative decisions of policymakers. Yeah, is this kind of re, kind of restating the, the, the prompt here? That's fine, good, okay. That's part of the identification. Notice how you have to identify it. It's not an explicit task in the questions, but you're doing it as part of the process. Now we're getting into a juicy part here. See the blue, all right, describe. Congressional candidates will seek, but remember, in regards to affecting policymaking, that's the key. You gotta answer it in response to the question. Congressional candidates will seek endorsements from interest groups to increase chances of election or re-election to Congress. Think about how you're narrowing it to the context of the scenario. Now, the juicy part, the close the loop part, the good stuff, the one that's going to really get you the point, to really show the reader, and I get this. And you notice how it's yellow and blue make green, because this, that's exact. Candidates will introduce or vote on legislation favored by interest groups in seeking and preserving their endorsements. Why are they doing this? What is it about endorsements that congressional candidates, all right, will want to seek this? Why, 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 why? Why would they do this? There it is. It's, it, they will do this because, well, I want to keep getting it, but remember on how it affects policymaking, it's going to influence how they vote, how they make legislation. That's why. And how they make legislation is because they want to get those endorsements. They want to keep those endorsements. They want to get elected. They want to get reelected. They want to remain the incumbent. Hey, by the way, if you wanted to include that, to remain the incumbent, you can. You can add another sentence if you wanted to throw that in there. If you just want to show off to the reader, be like, check it out. Look what I know. Do it. Do it. That's fine. All right. Remember, it's quality over quantity. That's the other thing. Just because you're writing a whole bunch of sentences, hey, I'm a reader. I've I've written I've read ten page essays and I've awarded zero points because what are you telling me? You're writing and writing, but what are you telling me? You gotta get specifics. You gotta be, you gotta answer the prompt. So there's part B. Now part C, and yeah, this is where we get a little complex. Another group interested in conserving land in California, supports the Democratic candidate in the election. Rather than having 140,000 members, the group is led by a, very, by a few very wealthy families. Explain how this difference, see the, see the kind of the compare, will likely affect the conservationist group's strategy in the election. All right, wow. Another group, another interest group, Conserving land, that's big, so environmental, right? Supports the Democratic candidate. So now ballot out. They're, so they're supporting the Democratic candidate. They don't have a bunch of members. Their group is very, very small. But they got, they got money. They got, they got wealth. Ooh. So this is like a different scenario. Explain. <sighs> Not again. Not the hard one. Right? Explain how this difference likely affect the group's strategy in the election. So the what is the difference? They're wealthy versus 
the the large the, the larger membership of the National Homeowner Association. So, what do you got to do? All right, you gotta you have to explain a strategy. <clears throat> a difference. Uh, this difference likely affect. So the group strategy got to identify the conservation group will likely use its wealthy resources to support the Democratic candidate. That's your claim. Right? That's what they got. That's that's part of you know that's that's part of the strategy. That's the big difference. They can't now to, to describe the campaign contributions can be used to purchase advertisements, and the, and you could go a little bit more into the purchase advertisements to promote the candidate, uh, the Democratic candidate. You can add that in there if you wanted to. A little bit more, a little bit more description. But here's where you got to close the loop. Here's the juicy part. Remember, that's what's going to get you that point for the explain. Despite having small membership, see how you're comparing? You're throwing a little despite, although, however, kind of thing. Significant wealth can educate and attract voters to the group's preferred candidate through the paid advertisements. Right? There are other options you could use. They could use their wealth to form a pack. You can get into that or a super pack, and that will really help to foster promotion of the candidate uh, by, by using that, that, that foundation of wealth. Uh, that's a, that's another response. You can use that as you know. Take this and then you know, make your own answer for part C by using uh, a pack or super pack. And there you go. Part A, part B, part C. Two to the three sentences. Answer the question. Point or no point. That's it. Good. Good. Now, secret part D. I just throw the. You're not going to get this. I, I, I Please don't get confused. I just threw this in there just in case, just in case one day they might want to throw in a compare just to kind of help you with this, compare the fundamental goals of the interest group and political party in supporting the candidate. I just did this to kind of help, you know, foster that comparison. The interest group, and just in case they were to throw in this element, right, like a political party or something like that. And you see how this thing, remember, I'm giving a fair. When you, when you compare, you got to be fair. The interest groups endorse the candidate in order to secure uh, his vote and influence to introduce and enact public policy favoring their interest. And then whereas, if you wanted to use that, whereas, although the candidate's political party supports his reelection to secure a majority in the House of Representatives to expand power and control the government to achieve their party platform goals. There. They're both supporting him, but they have different goals. Uh, this is just, 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 just kind of help you develop your comparison skills. Make you probably, you probably will most likely not have to do this. I just want to make sure that it, it, it reinforces comparison skills. Now, I know it's getting late. Here's another concept application FRQ. All right, this is something that you can use uh, as a practice. All right, you can actually pause right here. You can pause right here if you really want to practice this. All right, because what I'll do is like there are samples right after. Okay, so you can kind of pause right here. All right, um, and and use this. this you know. But if you want to keep going, you're going to be like, give me more, JB. I want more. All right. We got to do it. We got to do it. Uh, no rush time. All right. Let's do this. So here's the sample. Here it is. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, today charged Elon Musk, CEO and chairman of Silicon Valley-based Tesla, with securities fraud for a series of false and misleading tweets about a potential transaction to take Tesla private. Twitter going fast. On August 7, 2018, Musk tweeted to his 22 million Twitter followers that he could take Tesla private at $420 per share. That funding for the transaction had been secured, and the only remaining uncertainty was a shareholder vote. The SEC's complaint alleges that, in truth, Musk had not discussed specific deal terms with any potential financing partners, and he allegedly knew that the potential transaction was uncertain. According to the SEC's complaint, Musk, Musk tweets caused Tesla's stock price to jump by over 6% on August 7th and led to significant market disruption. Corporate officers hold positions of trust in our markets and have important responsibilities of stakeholders, said Stephen Haken, co-director of the SEC's Enforcement Division. An officer, an officer's celebrity status of reputation as a technological innovator does not give license to take those responsibilities like taking care to provide truthful and accurate information is among the CEO's most critical ob obligations, added Stephanie Avakian, co-director of the SEC's Enforcement Division. That standard applies with equal force if the communications are made via social media or another non-traditional form. Source, SEC press release, Elon Musk charged with security fraud for misleading tweets. You know what? We could have just read the source, but just in case, right? There it is, okay? Highlighted uh, potential components, elements of the scenario that could be applied. This You're doing this because of your understanding, your government knowledge and understanding. Don't forget, 
That is, you wanna talk about the key, right? The key to success, right? Explain, mastering, explain. That's one of the key to successes. Knowledge is power, right? Walk into the exam like, I was paying attention in class. I, uh, I, 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 I practiced. I have absorbed all knowledge and understanding of government. If you can do that, right? If you can use your brain as a sponge, soak it all up, that'll help. Because that's when you read this scenario, when you read these stories. I get it. I get it. I see what's going on here. And your brain starts processing. You're like, let's bring it up to the front, guys. Right? So you see these potential, right? Security and exchange mission. Oh, I know that. Right? By the way, you're expected to know what that is. That's actually in the CED, the SEC. Right? Elon Musk, CEO, chairman. Ah. Corporation. Tweet. All right. You see SEC's complaint. Uh, what are you doing? They're 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 talking about what the complaint was. Enforcement division. All right. Got to provide truthful and accurate information. I would assume that's what is required. Standard apply. So you can force, even if it's social media. Cool. And then of course you see SEC press release. Oh, I'm making this public. I want everybody to see what's up, what they're doing. And then what chart? It was security fraud, which of course is what the SEC is, you know, policing. Describe the role of the Securities Exchange Commission, SEC, in the context of the scenario. So we know what the SEC does. We need to divulge everything about it. Not necessarily. We just want to know what, what are they doing. And I already know what they do. It's kind of simple. It's, it's their one regular, one big one regulatory power. So A said, so therefore, all we need to do is A and C, right? Because we're just describing the role. You know, the Security Exchange Commission an independent regulatory agency or serves as an independent regulatory agency regulating the investment markets. Or you could also say the stock market. Describe it. The SEC enforced its regulations against Tesla, a publicly traded company, for engaging in questionable transactions or questionable investment actions. That is describing what's happening in the JV, so I'm just, I'm just identifying and describing what happened in the scenario. Yeah. So it's like the scenario is giving me the answer. So as long as your government understanding comes in, be like, I can just narrow this, right? So, but you see the specific stuff. You see the specifics, independent regulatory agency. Instead of just saying, oh, it's a re agency. It's an executive agency. No, 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 no. Government loves specifics. Loves, love, 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 love. Oh, the more specific you can get, please, please, please. Right? We love that. We love that. So part B, explain how Congress can affect how the SEC acts in the role described in part A, what their role was, is, is, you know, regulating uh, investment, stock market, that sort of thing. So how can, how can con explain how Congress can affect that, how the SEC acts in that role? Congress can pass a law limiting the enforcement power of the SEC. There it is. All right. You've identified something. Congressional committee members overseeing the SEC can effectively design and amend a bill to change or eliminate the regulatory power and jurisdiction of the SEC. Described relevant characteristics, good, 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 good stuff. Now let's close the loop, all right? Let's expand on that. When Congress passes a bill with the revised legislation, the SEC will lack specific regulatory authority allowing corporations and investors to expand their investment activity. They've been tied, right? Their hands are tied. Congress has said, I'm changing it. Are there reasons for why Congress would do that? Sure. And I'm sure our brain is kind of like, I know, I know, I know, but do we really need to divulge into that? Or would the next part maybe get into that? Who knows? But if you're thinking like that, good, good, because that's just showing that you got, you got the context, you get it. Suppose there is a vacant seat on the Securities and Exchange Commission and the issue in the scenario is still pending. In the context of the scenario, see, Explain how the process of selecting a new commissioner illustrates oversight and accountability in the bureaucracy. Oh, some really key terms here. Vacancy, Security Exchange Commission. Remember, you're supposed to know what the SEC is and its structure. And basically, I would use it to really help to you know the structure. It's an independent regulatory agency. You need to understand how those work. Uh, and if you come in here knowing that, good. Issue the scenario. Explain how the process selecting one. Oversight illustrates, illustrates oversight and accountability bureaucracy. Who's got the oversight and accountability? That would be the president, but also Congress, right? Particularly congressional committees. 
Uh, bureaucracy, who are those? Those are those agencies, those executive agencies. Okay. The president appoints regulatory commissioners with the advice and consent of the Senate, right? That's the process of selecting a new commissioner. That's how it works. Right? You, are, you, are, you are expected to know that. The president, so let's describe that. The president can appoint a commissioner who shares the president's views, but also must be politically acceptable to the respective Senate committee members and majority of the Senate. That's part of the process. It's talking, it's describing how the president appoints a commissioner. It's also describing the process of advice and consent of the Senate. Okay. Now let's close the loop because remember, it's main illustrates oversight and accountability. The Senate committee's public nomination, notice how I put public in there. Public nomination hearing process can pressure the president to appoint a commissioner who will have to publicly prove their expertise beyond the political preferences of the president. That Senate committee, who is specifically overseeing the SEC are going to be made up of members that know about the SEC's regulatory field, right? It's 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 part of it's a uh, it's part of the econ the economy here, investment, stock market, that kind of regulation. You have to be able to prove that. You have to put somebody that knows what they're talking about, especially for an independent regulatory agency. And so they will have to publicly, notice how publicly, publicly, this, this hearing process is public. So that's going to, that means the public will have to, that's another part of the accountability is like, hey, Senator, you appointed this person. You appointed somebody the president gave you. Why? Especially if it comes out that it doesn't work out. You know? So that's the thing why we make it public. Publicly prove their expertise. That's who you want in these independent regulatory agencies, right? Beyond the political presence of the president. Yes, there are going to be those ideological issues. But there are these realities that, A, I have to put somebody that the Senate is going to like. You could get, what's another way you could get into this? You could even get into divided government. But note that that's the issue. So there, we, did, we were able to squeeze this in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, all oh, my wonderful friends out there. All right, there it is. Much obliged for your attention. If you have any questions, we'll Keep going there. I'm here at your at your at your pleasure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for joining us today. Make sure you like our video so more students can see it. And I did put the link to register for the ones next week and the week after in the chat. So next Wednesday, we're going to be focusing on review strategies for the quantitative analysis. So thank you so much, JB, and we'll see everybody next week.